Very lucky to have with us Ryan Hamilton, Associate Professor of Marketing at Emory Business School. Uh, an expert in branding, price, customer experiences, even worked with companies, big companies like Walmart, FedEx, and others, has experience both in the academic and the corporate side. But the most interesting thing about Ryan, I realized very recently, was he and I actually share a very similar background. Ryan studied physics as an undergraduate, as did I. Ryan thought, I can't do this for 40 years, as did I. <laughs> and so we found ourselves in a very different place. He got his PhD in marketing at Northwestern. I got my PhD not in physics either. <laughs> and so here we are today. Without further ado, Ryan, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm going to be talking today about uh, how people use wish lists and other devices to uh, delay making purchase decisions. Uh, but if I could anticipate one of the questions that I'm sure to get, uh, no, the Prime Minister of Sweden has not called me yet <laughs> to ask about the implications of this particular piece of research, not this paper. Um, you know what's fun is following Dave Riebstein and is giving a talk. Yeah. That's a good time. Uh, I, I hope you all get to do that at some point. Um, so. Well, let's talk about wish lists, because those are also important. Um, so a, a lot of the research in uh, consumer behavior has, has looked like this with regards to how people make choices, or how we investigate how people make choices. So let's take an item. It could be anything. In this case, it's a, a DeWalt 1.3 amp 20-inch variable speed scroll saw. Could be anything. <laughs> We, we typically study choice by giving uh, the, the consumer an option or several options and asking them to evaluate it and make a choice all at the same time, right? And, and this represents a lot of the, way, the ways that consumers make choices in the real world. A lot of times we just walk into a store, we see what's available, and we buy something. Um, so nothing wrong with that. But it's not the only way that people make choices. So I picked this particular item because it has been, for more than a year now, on my Amazon wish list. So at some point in the past, I evaluated that option, and I didn't make a purchase decision. I didn't decide, yes, I'm going to buy this, or no, I'm not going to buy this. I punted. I delayed making a choice. Now, I used a wish list. Um, uh, those are, are very common, very available. Some people use their shopping carts that way. So they'll just toss it in the electronic shopping cart, leave it there for a few days or weeks or months, and come back to it. Uh, but this isn't a new phenomenon. Uh, going back to the days of, of paper catalogs, a lot of times people would go through those multiple times. Maybe you circle some things and then come back to it later. Uh, even window shopping is arguably a form of this, where you evaluate something at one point in time and then delay the choice. So th that's the purpose of this project here. We're looking at what does this expanded decision process look like, and how, how might it be different from this unitary decision process. Um, now, people have looked at multi-stage decision processes before. We're, we're not the first to do that. Um, we have some, some technical uh, changes that we made to the, the procedures uh, that I'm not going to go into in great detail. So I, th I think we're a little bit different in terms of the procedures that we use to test this. But also, more importantly, the question that we're trying to answer is one that I think has not been sufficiently addressed by previous research. So we're interested in how do these two different choice procedures change the likelihood of purchase, change the likelihood of actually making a choice. So we've got some population. We show them this item. Some of them are going to say, yes, I want to buy that. Some of them are going to say, no, I don't want to buy that. If we gave them a third option of saying, maybe I want to buy this. I'll decide later. If we give them that option, some people are going to take it. Some people are going to put off that choice. If we then come back to them later, the question is, what's going to happen to that group? So it could be that that group splits exactly the same way that they would have without anything. So that would be our null hypothesis. Nothing happens. Uh, it could be that this option to delay actually increases choice probabilities. right? So if, if you look at this from a, a goals perspective, if I have this goal of acquiring this item and I perceive this uh, delay to be an interruption of that goal, well, the goals research tells us that that would actually strengthen my desire. Uh, if you think about research on savoring, right? it could be that, that setting this aside for a little while lets me really anticipate the benefits of it. And so that could increase my desire for it. What we're going to argue is it will decrease. 
So having this option to delay, taking that delay, and then returning to it is going to decrease my ultimate likelihood of buying relative to this initial case where it's just a straight up down decision. Uh, the reason that we're going to make this prediction comes from some uh, previous research that's been done on desirability and feasibility attributes. Um, we're going to use kind of the, the technical psychological definitions for these. You, you may have a lay definition of these terms that's a little bit different. When we talk about desirability, we're really talking about the why of the product. Uh, what does it do and, and how can it benefit me? And the feasibility is much more focused on the how. So how am I going to purchase this? How am I going to get it to my apartment? How am I going to uh, make it work? Right? And we argue that these two different types of attributes are going to be uh, emphasized to a different degree when we break things apart as opposed to when we make this unitary purchase decision all at the same time. And, and that change in weights is what's going to drive this ultimate um, change in, in choice shares where people are going to be less likely to buy overall. So um, if we're deciding all at one time, Here's the information. Do you like this item? Do you want to buy it? Yes or no? Then we'll argue that these feasibility and desirability attributes are going to be kind of weighted in, in kind of a neutral state. So this would be our baseline. You're going to have to consider both. Uh, how much do you like it? How well will it work? And also, um, is it worth buying now? Those kinds of things. If we break it up, though, then this first stage, you are ultimately deciding, is it worth coming back to later? And in that situation, the desirability attributes are kind of all that matters. Right? It's free to go back to your wish list later. Right? You don't have to incur any costs. Uh, the feasibility concerns are just going to be much less important. When you come back to it, you should be in this initial state uh, up here, right? where you're considering both of it, uh, both of these types of attributes. But this research on multi-stage decision making says, when you've already used some information in your decision process, so in this case, the desirability attributes, then when you come back to it, you will use that information less. So because I've already considered how much I like it, when I come back to it, I'm really going to be focused on the feasibility attributes. And if we assume that the majority of the things that are uh, chosen for delaying choice perform well on these desirability attributes, that's why you're considering it again, then that means that on average, you're going to be focusing on kind of the, the less desirable set of attributes when you come back to it, and that's going to make you less likely to come back and purchase it uh, overall. All right, so we're going to predict then, based on this, this kind of uh, model, lower preference, um, reduced purchase likelihood, and less willingness to pay uh, as a result of this process. So these predictions are relative to that top case. If I just give you a straight up or down yes or no decision, or uh, if I allow you to, to delay choice if you choose to. So uh, I'm going to walk through the details of one experiment, uh, and then I'll, I'll show you that we replicate the same basic um, framework in a number of different uh, studies. So for this experiment, um, I ran this with students in my consumer psychology class, um, and I gave them the opportunity to buy from me, at a steep discount, um, a pizza cutter in the shape of the USS Enterprise from Star Trek. <laughs> Um, now, this is the Enterprise D from the next generation, um, in case that matters. Um, we have a different pizza cutter that looks a little different. Uh, this was an example product that I used in many, many classes in this, um, in this class that I taught. They had to develop a, a marketing plan for this. Uh, they, they were familiar with this product at the time that I asked them about it. Um, and so I said, it's normally $30 plus shipping. I will sell it to you for $10 if you want to buy it. So the choice they were making was, do you want to buy it? If, if you say yes, I'll enter you into a drawing, and I'll draw out a couple of people who will actually literally buy this thing from me um, in front of the class. Um, and the, randomly, they were assigned to these two conditions. So some of them had the opportunity to just say yes or no right then. Some of them had yes, no, or maybe, where the maybe was, uh, if you're not sure, I'll ask you again in two days' time at our next class period. So we came back to that group. Um, and then that group, uh, those who said maybe, they had to tell me at, at time two, um, after two days, yes or no. So here's what we found. So this is time one. Uh, people in the yes, no condition, about a third of them said, yes, I would be interested in, in buying this um, uh, pizza cutter at a discount. In condition two, uh, we had a slightly distribu different distribution, and we had this 19% who said, I'm not sure, ask me again later. 
looking just at that 19%, when we came back and asked them two days later, the vast majority of them said no. And so when you tally up um, just the total yes, no votes uh, across the two conditions, we see a decrease where it went from 34 to 23% saying they would be interested in buying that product just by giving some people the opportunity to cool off for a little bit. So uh, we've run a number of different studies using the same basic paradigm, um, and you can see consistent results here, where if there is the maybe option, if there's the option to put it on a wish list or to delay, uh, then you ultimately see lower overall choice shares um, as a result of this. Uh, we changed some specifics, obviously different product categories. Some were run um, with students, some were run in an online sample. Uh, several of these were incentive compatible, as in we, we literally gave them the opportunity to buy it from us. Uh, some of them were hypothetical. Um, we called it different things, so sometimes it was just a delay, sometimes we called it a wish list, sometimes we called it a saved for later list. Uh, same basic consistent findings. So we found that it uh, resulted in purchase, uh, decrease in purchase likelihood. Um, we wanted to test these kind of related ideas of would it also, could we also detect it in terms of purchase intent and willingness to pay. So we ran two studies um, that both used the same stimulus. It was this camera. Here was this camera. You had the opportunity to either. Um, uh, so this one, we, we wanted to control um, this process more directly. So uh, previously in the, in the other studies I showed you, we allowed people to opt in to this wish list choice, right, as, as things tend to be in nature. Uh, in this one, we randomly assigned people to think like a wish list person or to think like a purchase person. So uh, we used this mindset manipulation where people were asked to think about that camera from the perspective of buying it or to think about it from the perspective of potentially putting on a wish list so that you could revisit it and consider it later. Uh, we then uh, let some time elapse, and then we came back and asked them to reevaluate it. So we showed them all the same information again. Here's this camera again. Now, uh, are you likely to purchase it or are you not? So some people, so these are two different experiments here where we asked two different dependent variables, uh, but the same basic design. So some people were thinking about it in terms of purchase. They went away, they came back. They were still thinking about it in terms of purchase. So the delay was the same. The fact that they got to see it twice was the same. The other people, they first thought about it in terms of a wish list, in terms of this delay. Then they came back and thought about it in terms of purchase. So we had this shift in mindset uh, across the two conditions there. And we found that for both dependent variables, uh, people were in, less likely to indicate that they'd be willing to purchase it and also were willing to pay less for the camera overall if they had switched these mindsets, had first thought about it in terms of delay and then thought about it in terms of purchase. So we can make some uh, uh, assumptions, some predictions about the implications of this research if this basic model is accurate. So if we get this shift in terms of desirability and feasibility attribute weighting, then that has some implications. One of them is in terms of choice. So options can excel on desirability attributes or on feasibility attributes. So some attributes or some options are very feasible, some options are very desirable. If you're considering two options from the perspective of deciding whether or not you want to revisit one of them to look at it later, then we would expect that you would tend to choose the desirable option, right? Because that's where your mind's at. On the other hand, if you are coming back to reevaluate some options, uh, then the feasible option should, uh, should be a little bit more um, uh, attractive to you. So this actually predicts a difference in terms of choice share. So we ran a, a number of experiments uh, in this uh, paradigm. I'll only show you one. This one, we based this off of some previous research that had been done, but we described two laptops, one of which was more desirable in that it was a better performer, right? just a better laptop. One was more feasible in that it uh, cost less. Right. So it had this rebate associated with it. Again, this is based off of some previous research. And this was a within subject design. So we asked people to make this choice twice. So in the first case, we said, here are these two laptops. Imagine you want to put one of them on a wish list so you can come back and, and revisit it later. Which of these two laptops would you choose to put on your wish list? Then we said, OK, well, imagine that you had chosen ultimately decided to put both of them on your wish list. You then came back, and it's been a few weeks later. Which of these two uh, laptops would you choose from off of your wish list? And we found that people switched. Right? Uh, they shouldn't. Uh, if you liked one of the laptops more and were more willing to consider it, then that should have been consistent in going through. But we found that switching people's perspectives actually switched which laptop uh, they chose in these two different scenarios. 
All right, so can affect purchase likelihood, purchase intent, um, also can uh, result in preference reversals, uh, getting people to choose different things depending on what their goals are. Another implication of this is in terms of persuasive appeals. So different types of information should be more persuasive to people depending on which stage in this decision process they're in. So here we have two ad mockups that you might find uh, in a banner ad or that you might find uh, in showing up in your, your email inbox. One of them is a desirability ad. Focuses on the features of the product, why it's great. The other is a feasibility ad. Emphasizes the price discount uh, and why it's a good idea to buy it. Again, we would predict that these two ads would be differentially uh, influential depending on the stage that people are in. So uh, we use the same mindset manipulation as before, got people to think in terms of wish lists or think in terms of uh, purchase, uh, let some time pass, and then we randomly assign them to either get the desirability ad, the ad that focused on uh, the product features, or the feasibility ad, the one that focused on price. I realize that that diagram could be a little confusing. This is kind of the standard academic way of writing that. It's two by two design. <laughs> Uh, and so here's what we find. Sure enough, the ads change purchase likelihood depending on which uh, state you were in. So if you were thinking about it from purchase, from this purchase perspective, then the desirability ad was relatively more persuasive. If you were thinking about it from this change, first thinking about it in terms of wish list and then thinking about it in terms of purchase, then it was actually the feasibility ad uh, that mattered more. So in terms of implications of this research, uh, this I think is the most implication heavy uh, study that I'll show you. Uh, this suggests that if you want to get people to unabandon their shopping carts to come back and purchase something that uh, they've looked at before, if you're able to do targeted banner ads or targeted email communications based on their browsing history, uh, it is likely going to be more persuasive if you focus on the feasibility stuff. Free shipping, reduced price, how am I gonna get this thing uh, delivered uh, and purchased? Uh, rather than focusing on the desirability stuff, the stuff that initially attracted them to the product. All right, so uh, offering people the opportunity to delay choice uh, seems to increase the importance of feasibility attributes relative to desirability attributes. That is implications for purchase likelihood and willingness to pay. Um, feasibility may be a way uh, of getting people to unabandon those shopping carts uh, and get them to purchase. Uh, and then uh, an implication uh, that falls out of this research is that um, the use of wish lists and shopping carts and delay tactics may ultimately serve as a reasonable self-control device for consumers. Um, it turns out that a cooling off period could sap some of the strength of these desirability attributes and ultimately make us less likely to purchase stuff that we, we maybe don't, don't want or don't need. And with that, thank you. Yes. This may be not the best question, so bear I've with got me. not the best answer. We are fine. Cool. <laughs> and maybe we can come back to this because we both live in Atlanta. But when we, when you think about, um, so you took this from the mind frame of people get, being given a decision to have a wish list, but shopping cart abandonment isn't the same True. Yep. as a wish list. Absolutely. So can you walk me through how you took that your wish list research and then applied it to shopping cart abandonment and, and kind of where you took that. Very good, yes. Uh, I, I skipped a step when I've got a longer uh, time frame to talk. So um, there was a, a senior executive at Amazon who talked about the way that they think about shopping carts uh, or, or rather the, what their research has shown in terms of how people use them. And they had four categories of shopping cart usage. Um, uh, two of them, two of the four, were about this delay. People essentially using it in either a short-term delay or a long-term delay where it's a consideration basket. So you are 100% you are right that their uh, shopping cart abandonment is a broader phenomenon than what I'm talking about. Um, I should have been more precise. There are types of shopping cart abandonment that could be addressed by what I'm saying. You're right, not all of it. Okay. So thank you for clarifying. I, no, I appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much.